Hello and welcome back to Pokemon Yellow. I'm in Spooky Town, about to enter the Pokemon Tower. But first, I sort of forgot to do this last episode. I bought, I, well, in fact, I bought a um, a Water Stone, and I also got Ice Beam, and I evolved our our like slave, <laughs> our slave um, Vaporeon. But I didn't teach you Ice Beam, which was the whole point. So um, yeah, I also put some items back into the computer, so a bunch of TMs that I'm not going to use. I put the um, old rod, the lift key, because we're not going to need the lift key at the moment. Um, well, at all anymore, I don't think. As so let's just teach this to chocolate. A nice frozen chocolate, I don't know. <laughs> but this is just what we're going to be doing to, uh, to use to deal with all the ghastlies and the ghost taps and the things that Trouble can't deal with at the moment. Uh, so let's get rid of sound attack, because why not? I'll keep Truffle out first because I think we have a rival battle coming up. But um, as soon as we need to battle any ghost types, I will switch out. So I did go and also buy some items, mainly repels, just because I want to minimise the amount of ghost type Pokemon I have to run into and have to take a cheaty way out by using a different Pokemon that I'm not solo running with. <laughs> okay, so where's our rival gonna... is it here? Somewhere? Oh, there he is. <laughs> hey, Eviolon! What brings you here? Your Pokemon don't look dead. Your Pokemon don't look dead. <laughs> it's kind of blunt. Oh, here's where the, the sub room is coming. If you remember a few episodes ago, back in the SSN, I think it was the last time we saw his Raticate, or Ratista, whatever he had. And then and the next time you see him after that is here, in the Pokemon Tower. As if one of his Pokemon, the, the Ratista, died. So sad. Anyway, I, I can at least make them faint. Oh, oh, mine faint. I thought he was talking about his own Pokemon. Oh, poor Skipper. Anyway, I don't think he has any ghost type Pokemon. Or ever does. So we should be good on that front. Um, let's just go for a bite. Just bite my way through and see how much we can do. Ah, I didn't quite take it out. Shouldn't do too much. No, we're good. I think I, yeah, I also bought some super potions, team. I have some max potions and I, and hack potions. I really want to save the max potions till the end game, just because they're not things we can buy. Uh, the same with the ethers. So I actually put the ethers that I did have into the computer, just because I don't want to tempt myself. Because um, like I mentioned in the previous episode, for the Elite Four, we're going to want to uh, some PP restoration. Because we're only using one Pokemon, so we're only restricted to four moves, and we're gonna, obviously going to have a very small limitation on the amount of moves we can use. And so ethers are going to be extremely important at that point, and we can't buy them. And as I mentioned, I'll just go around the region and go hunting for them before we get to the elite form. I thought this would be a little bit more difficult. No, no offense, Skipper, or anything. But I think we're still sort of in the first half of the game. We're more in the middle now, I think. But definitely in difficulty, it... Um, I would say it gets exponentially more difficult as you play the game. Just because things start evolving, learning more moves, and as well as Pokémon getting high level, other Pokémon get high level, your Pokémon doesn't get levels up as fast, and also the AI for later gym leaders, I think, is better than, oh, like, gym leaders and just trainers in general is better than the early ones. What? Um, oh, I didn't see that. I took it too easy on you. Of course you did. <laughs> How's your pocket looks coming along? I should have caused a Cubone. Oh, the whole sad story of the Cubone and the Mario Wickedness. So I'm going to avoid the uh, trainers as much as possible in here. I do love Gary's music though. Well. It's so it's got such swag to it. <laughs> such a swagger. Um Can we avoid you? I don't know whether we can run into Pokemon on this level yet. We haven't run into them. But I don't want to push my luck. Oh, we can't of course. We have to baffle them. I'll probably do a um I just switch him for um Oh, you don't battle me, let's see what you say. Even when we could not identify the wayward ghosts, a Sylphscope might be able to unmask them. Okay. So that's what we have and that's why we can do this now. We got it from um, 
Team Rocket Base. Let's me put the camera panels. Uh, where did I put them? Fresh water, we'll need that for later on. I think... You know what I did? Let's go, let's go buy some. <laughs> I went to go buy some and I clicked buy and then my bag was full and I remembered I needed to empty my bag. But then I forgot to go back and actually buy them. So, <laughs> I tried to buy them. But yeah, it's just right here. So rather than skipping, might as well just walk to it. <clears throat> And we might as well heal up too at this point because we're already outside. Uh, Super Pal, how many you want to buy? About 10, I was going to buy 10 last time, but 20 because it might be useful for later on. And we have the money, we're rich. <laughs> oh, the colour's so vi like vibrant on this. It's so strange because um, I always thought this was a grey town back on the... Um, Game Boy Color. <laughs> Despite being called the Game Boy Color, the colors weren't all that bright, to be honest. I mean, I guess I am colorblind, so that's probably some contributing fact to it. But um, I, I don't. I feel like you couldn't see that it was this nice lavendery, purpley color. Anyway, let's head up. I don't think there's too many floors. We're not too far in on the game for like dungeon areas like this to be too long. I don't think there are any like sort of dungeon areas that are. I would call this a dungeon area. And stereo stereotypically, it, it fits the dungeon area kind of thing. Because <laughs> you've got floors, you've got battles to go through, you've got random encounters. Um, there at the bottom. There we go. Now, how can we best avoid these? And it's sort of like a puzzle to avoid people with. Like we can just go around them and do that. <laughs> we get an escape rope. <clears throat> and so that's the sort of thing Pokemon does. It incorporates um, strategies where you can avoid trainers either by being clever and witty about it by solving like a puzzle to get around them or we have to battle this person or by running into grass, or like you either have a grass route where you like, could run into multiple Pokemon or a trainer without any grass on the other side and so you can either choose to run into a cha trainer or have take your chances of running into the grass. Uh, there's also the types of ones where they have trainers moving about so it tests your um, reflexes which I quite like. <laughs> it's kind of interesting that they, how they implement all these mechanics just for running into trainer battles. I don't know, I quite like it. Luckily, uh, Chocolate's the defensive evolution. Or at least it's the, the defensive one of this generation. I think later on, I think Umbreon is more defensive. Um, Umbreon, yeah, Umbreon's probably the most defensive out of the evolutions. I'm thinking Sylveon is quite specially defensive. And I know Glaceon's pretty defensive too. But let's not, <laughs> let's not get into that. Good, the confusion didn't hurt us. Hopefully he has, do you have no Pokemon, more Pokemon? No, damn it, we have another one. I'm just gonna stay in here rather than having to switch. And hope the confusion isn't too bad. But Ice Beam's not, oh, we don't have very much PP on the Ice Beam, do we? Hmm, that's a pain. So we definitely want to run into minimal battles here. Come on. My critical hits, wow, well, didn't do very much. I think critical hits do more damage in the earlier games. I don't remember at what point they changed it. It might have been Generation 4, because I know that that was the time when they changed a lot of the mechanics, just to balance everything out. But back on in the first games, um, critical hits did two times the amount of damage. I think now they just do 1.5. Thank you, Chocolate. We probably need to heal you up too. But yeah, that's all thing with the trainers, it's just kind of a, a hidden mechanic. Like if you're someone who wants to uh, be clever and witty, it sort of takes mechanics from other games. Obviously because you've got the generic avoiding traps kind of 
thing like in Zelda, you, you've got to get your timing right. And there's also kind of puzzles where you've got to find the perfect path through. And if you don't, you get a punishment of taking damage or something, which would be the same as having to enter a battle. But sort of you get a second chance with this, because you also get the battle as well. It's just sort of mechanics within mechanics. It's, it's, it's interesting. I don't know. I probably should shut up. If I remember correctly, those square things heal you. Which is another mechanic taken from like Zelda games. <laughs> so no, we don't, don't want to go up there. And these are one of the turny aroundy ones. Um, oh, we have to make your way around here, I see. Okay, let me... Okay, we're, we're safe. Let's go, go, go! Okay, we're fully healed. What? There's another one there. Can we? I'm not, no, I don't think we can get past you, unfortunately. Let's see. Oh, oh yes, we can! <laughs> now, do you turn around? Okay, no, you don't. <laughs> I just... The reason I brought this up, because I think this area demonstrates it really well. Because it has sort of all of the features. Let me just... Uh, Get another, what do call it? Uh, repel. Okay, so, oh good, I'm glad I didn't walk into the bottom one. Now do we need to go up or down? Let's just walk next to you. Where's the path that we need to go to? I'm thinking it's gonna be up. I want to know what's down though, can we? Okay, there's an item below us, so we, yeah, we're just going up here. <laughs> I love that sort of creepy, evil laugh that a lot of like Japanese things have in it. Items, oh no, Pokemon. Go chocolate. <laughs> Not another confused ray, really. I go for an ice beam. Oh, of course, in those um, squares, we uh, our PP gets restored. So we're not going to need to keep on running back to the Pokemon Center, so that's good at least. But this should be the only part where I have to cheat a little bit and uh, not solo with Eevee. As I've mentioned before. Wow, come on. Damn confused, Ray. I think the confusion must be slightly different in the early games, or I'm just getting incredibly unlucky. I'm not going to count a chocolate faint as a faint, however I'm pretty sure if chocolate does faint, uh, Eevee's also going to faint because we're not going to be able to do any damage to Ghastly's. So actually, rather than after this battle we're going to use another potion, what I'll probably do is look for another square, and if we can get to one without having to enter another battle uh, that we don't have to enter, we will just go to that one. Otherwise, if we need, if I see that we need to go into a battle and there's no square, healing the square thing you take before it, I'll give a, a potion to chocolate. I might also switch out chocolate first, because I think the only Pokemon that you can that you battle into, that uh, you battle or run into in this, is uh, Ghastly's. Maybe some Hollanders do. Um, now I think we're going to have to battle you, unfortunately. Uh, so let's get Potion. And we'll switch you up. Just because all we're doing at the moment is just taking more damage on Truffle. And Truffle doesn't need the experience, so... Yeah, there you go. I thought that would be. There's also kind of the unknown factor of you don't know how far their range is, their viewing range, but you can sort of infer from how the how the positioning of all the environments and how if they and if they move or not. Um, and you can pretty much guarantee that if you can get out, if you, if you can walk to a point where they're completely out of your sight, they're definitely not going to be able to. Um, See, I don't know, it's just sort of read between the lines of mechanics of 
Pokemon. <laughs> that you sort of learn over time after playing through the games after many years. That you don't really appreciate when you are actually learning them and you are actually buying them, but I thought I would bring it up because I think it's cool. And it's good game design, I think. Oh no, we didn't quite do half there. This must be a stronger ghastly. I don't think any of the other ones had leg. Maybe they did. Maybe they just didn't use it. Yep, it's slightly stronger. Yes, we froze it. <laughs> we'll also get lucky and get that a few times with Ice Beam. I know Surf would do more. Uh, obviously we don't have Surf at the moment. But the Ice Beam has a nice bonus of possible freezing. But we're not going to need to use chocolate in battle uh, after this anyway. Let's grab this item. Right, candy. Probably not going to use it then. I could we have come to the bottom? No, we couldn't have. <laughs> I'm not going to go bother getting that item. Oh, Pecan Intruders, this is the Cubone thing. And I should have a Eevee out for this one, actually. <laughs> because this isn't a ghost type Pokemon. Yeah, it's my work. Level 30. Just because chocolate's going to get the experience anyway, I'm going to go for an Ice Beam. Oh really, I thought we'd be slower there. I thought my rock was quite a fast Pokemon. And um, the ghost was the restless soul of Coupon's mother. Oh, I think we could have caught that. I know, I, know um, I had sort of a, a heated discussion. <laughs> Not an argument, a heated, heated discussion with uh, one of my friends a while ago. About Pokemon, yeah, I know, I'm that sad that I had heated discussions about Pokemon. Or whether you could catch Cubone in the game. Uh, but they, their, their only experience was with the remakes. My experience is obviously with Pokemon Yellow. I'd never played the remakes in my childhood. And I... Apparently you can't catch it in the remakes, but I'm almost definite you can catch it in this one. Because I, I thought you could. Maybe you couldn't, though. I'll have to look growing up. Anyway, Grandpa here wanted to- oh, Grandpa here wanted to complain, so we're setting him straight. So Grandpa is not there, Grandpa, as I was initially thinking, that's why I was so confused, like, why are Team Rocket talking about Grandpa? They were making fun of him because he's an old man. Um, so render yourself invisible or prepare to fight. Render myself invisible? That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> so this is another location that I forgot we battled Team Rocket in, or Jesse and James. Hopefully we can do a lot to that. Maybe I should be going for double uh, edge. Because we're almost out of here and we can use the... Oh, okay, quick light. Yay. Uh, we can use the escape rope afterwards to get out so we don't have to bother with any more battles or waiting potions, etc, etc. So it doesn't matter too much if we take a little bit of damage. It just must not be nice to guarantee that we do take them out, just in case they poison us or whatever. And since we are um, such a high level compared to them, we have so much more HP, so um, the bludge doesn't recoil, recoil too much because it um, recoils 50% of the damage we do to them. So even if we do extra damage, which we are doing a lot of the time, we don't take that extra damage, which is nice. I think that would have been really scary, and it would have taken a lot of strategizing to get past that if they tried to... Um, if you actually implemented that into the game where if you did more damage then if your move would have done more damage than it actually did but the Pokemon fainted you actually took that extra damage because that would make sense like logically because it's the same move but if you use it against different Pokemon you take different amounts of damage just because you know they had more health I don't know but it would be a kind of a bad mechanic for the move because you'd be like, persuaded to use moves with less damage I, I don't know whatever um, I don't think we want to learn this. Um, yeah, because this is low accurate. We can buy this if we want to anyway. Yeah, we can buy it if we do want to at some point from the um, Mart. Uh, from the... From Mart in Celadon. However, it's low accuracy, takes recoil, and less damage than Double Edge. So it's just kind of a much worse version of Double Edge. <laughs> we don't want that. Looks like Team Rocket's blasting off again. 
It's how long time we see them. I think it was mentioned that it was four times we saw them. I think it's been four times now. Mr. Fuji. Huh, you came to save me? Thank you. But I came here of my own free will. I came to calm the soul of Kubon's mother. I think Marowak's spirit has gone to the afterlife. I must thank you for your kind concern. Follow me to my home. Oh, we get taken out anyway. Thank you. Don't have to bother with all the crazy ghost maniacs. Um, we're still supposed to... Oh yeah, we need the poker flute, don't we? Evian, your Pokedex quest may fail without love for your Pokemon. I think this may help your quest. The poker flute. <laughs> I felt like the music was kind of an epic -y feel to um, or sort of it had a deep emotional underlying tone to the, <laughs> the text I was be the text I was reading. Upon hearing a poker flute at sleeping Pokemon, will spring awake. It works on all sleeping Pokemon. Okay. Uh, let's just go heal up. And where do we want to go here? Because there are a couple places we can go. We have the bike. So we can, can go back down the bicycle road because we can get rid of the Snorlax now. Can we go into Saffron at this point? I think we can. Because we have the fresh water. Should we try? Uh, we can also go down below us onto the watery route uh, with all the fishermen and the fishy wishies. And there's a Snorlax there, but we can get past it now. Um, so we can go into a couple of places here. Maybe I'll just try Saffron. <clears throat> Wait, do we want a oh, Pals War? I yeah. Do we, I was gonna say do we want to come this way because I can't remember who we battled and who we've not. But let's just go with the usual strategy of avoiding as many people as possible. And hopefully... Hopefully it doesn't mean any extra battles. Okay, good. Uh, so here's Saffron, let's try it. Whoa, boy, I'm parched. Uh, can I have this drink? Gee, thanks. <laughs> you don't even let me answer. You just steal it from me. If you want to go to Saffron City, you can go through. I'll share this with the other guy. One? Why are you letting me through through bribery? Two? Why are you stealing from ten-year-old children? Three? I gave you one bottle of water and then you choose to not only leave your post but go around to give just one bottle of water with the other guards? Like, that's a bit disgusting, but like, why? It's a bottle of water. <laughs> I don't know what. Drinks? I gave you one, okay. Maybe he has some magic, magical drink multiplying skills or something. But why, yeah, why doesn't he have the availability of drinks? Oh god, this is so bright, it's so yellow. Oh. Saffron must be a yellowy colour. Oh gosh, this is crazily bright. But yeah, that was just a weird flaws to the game. <laughs> Me pointing out game uh, logic failure. Can we do the gym yet? We might be able to, um, at least the um, the, the not proper gym. Because <laughs> in this game there's the not proper fighting gym and the proper fighting, the proper psychic gym. Um, but we're ne nearing the end of the episode. So before I do anything else, I might just um, finish off. Oh, we can get Mimic. Um, I don't think I bought a poker. Oh no, we can't yet because I think this is the Mimic Girl's house. Yeah. Is that a copycat girl? I think. Let's just look around. I think I'm sure it's one of those. <clears throat> also, can we get down to Fuchsia? without actually going through the routes and just be lazy and don't have to battle all the trainers just avoid it but yeah Team Rocket are blocking our way I mean either blocking your way to Fuchsia too oh no we can get straight through if this is Fuchsia oh no this isn't Fuchsia this is um 
I'm joking, there's not a, there's not a way to get the fusion. <laughs> In my head, this entrance would have gone to fuchsia though. But I think things I think things don't quite align exactly. That goes to um Vermilion. <laughs> I think maybe originally they were going to uh does it make sense? I mean, it might make sense. Anyway, uh, so what I'll probably do is just end up here. I don't want to start anything new this episode. Um, a little bit shorter, but I think my episodes are too long anyway. Babbling about nothing. But anyway, next time we will head to Fuchsia. For real. Not through go for fake entrances and end up in Vermilion. <laughs> probably the, the cycling roadway, because that's more fun. I quite like that route, cycle roads. In fact, the cycling mode in the first generation was actually a pretty fun one. I think it was probably one of the best ones. <laughs> now I'm comparing cycling modes. Or well, I, I did like the mechanic in generation 3 where it timed you. It was just a nice addition, I guess. Anyway, I'll shut up now, I'm sorry. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care.